What's up my friends, welcome back. This will be a project that a lot of you guys are waiting for a long time. This is a brushed motors Arduino based drone. And I say brushed because usually drones are using brushless motors. This is the Arduino based drone that I've built in my past tutorials. It is a cheap drone for a drone that uses brushless motors, but it's also quite expensive for a drone that you only want to play around or learn electronics. Why? Well, each brushless motor will cost you around 8 or 10 dollars. And for each motor you will need an electronic speed controller. So each EAC is also 8 or 10 dollars. So that could get you up to 80 dollars just for the motors if you want good components. I know brushless motors are perfect for drones because they are powerful, they have quite precise speed control with the speed controllers and also reach high speeds. But in this tutorial we will build our drone using brushed mini coreless DC motors. Five of these motors will cost you only 2 dollars. So that's way less than using brushless motors. And another advantage is that you don't need the electronic speed controller anymore. You only need the motors. So since this project is quite long and this drone is not working well yet, I will divide this project in a few videos. This will be the first video where we will talk about the components that we need to build our drone and also how to prepare our PCB. Both if you're using Arduino Pro Mini and a prototype PCB or you will design your own PCB. The second video will be about building the drone. Building the frame, connecting the motors, uploading the code and so on. I might make a video only about the code but I'm not sure yet. You will find more information, photos, schematics, all the examples code that I leave in the description below and on my webpage so make sure you check those out if you want to build this project. So this will be the first video so let's get started. What's up my friends? Welcome back. As you can see, this is a mini drone. So the most important factor in building this drone is its weight. That's why I've designed this board that I will show you later, so the weight will be way less. Once designed, upload your Gerbil files to GLC PCB, which is not only the sponsor of this video, but also offer PCB manufacturer services for amazing prices. Ok, so the DC motors are not that powerful. So we have to make this drone as light as we can. To improve thrust, instead of using small propellers directly attached to the motors like this, I've bought these gear propeller supports for only 2 more dollars. Then I've bought 8 propellers like this one, so I should have spare parts in case I break one of them. All these parts are made out of plastic and they are very light. We fit the mini DC motor inside of the plastic gear support and the arms of the drones are done. We will also need a drone body, in my case I 3D printed. It. it is designed so the gears with the motors will fit perfectly in this hole for each arm. If you don't have a 3D printer and you want to build your own, try using foam or very light plywood so it won't weigh too much. Next, we will also use a small LiPo battery like this one of around 500 mAh so the drone won't fly too long. I also have a smaller one. This should give me around 4 or 5 minutes of flight time. Now pay attention, we will talk about the main board, the flight controller board. You will have two options for this. One is designing the board yourself so it will be much lighter and have a professional manufacturer printed. And the other option is using prototyping Dell PCB and the Arduino Pro Mini and solder everything here using wires as we did in the past Arduino based drone project. Since I work on this project for a long time, I first made a lot of breadboard tests. Then I've made a few drilled PCB prototypes for my past Arduino drone and the RC plane and those were quite good. Next I've designed my PCB but I had it CNC milled. That worked quite well, but the board was a bit heavy and still had some errors. Finally, I've made version 3, 4 and 5 of this board and sent it to JLC PCB and had it printed and this is the final product. It weighs a few grams. It looks so good and professional and you already have all the connections made. All you have to do is to solder the components. I've got 10 of these PCBs in just one $2 order. JLC PCB will also give you free shipping for your first order so you might want to check their webpage that you could find in the link below and make your order as well. So now let's talk about the components. 
if you build this drone using Arduino, well, you will need an Arduino Pro Mini. Make sure that is a 60 MHz because we will need a lot of speed for the PID code. Next, we need the IMU module to read the angle and accelerations. For that, once again, I will use the MPU 6050 gyro and accelerometer. Pay attention one more time. We will use the NRF24 radio connection once again. So, the radio transmitter for this drone will be the same as in the past tutorial. Since I won't talk about it too much in this series, make sure you watch the video on how I build this in the description. So, the next component that we need is an NRF24 module like this one. The transmitter should use a power antenna amplified one so we will have more range and the receiver will be using a normal PCB antenna like this small module here. Ok, so we know the big components. Let's talk about the small ones. First, we will need a 3.3 voltage regulator for the NRF24 module, since this module works at that voltage. Apply a higher voltage to it and you will burn it. We will also need some capacitors to smooth the voltage input, since it will be directly from the battery. Finally, we will need some small MOSFETs to control the power applied to the motors, some resistors for the pulldowns and some Schottky diodes. Make sure that the MOSFETs could withstand around 3 amps of current, since the motors will draw a lot of it. And that's it, that's all we need. You have the link for the full list of components below. Now let's talk about the design PCB. It uses the same chip as the Arduino Nano and Pro Mini, and that is the Atmega 328P AU chip. This is the full schematic of the entire PCB and this is the layout. You have more photos with this below. So, we will need a brand new Atmega chip, a 16 MHz crystal oscillator, an SMD push button for the reset, the 3.3 voltage regulator, the 4 MOSFETs in an SOT23 package which is this small shape, SMD resistors and capacitors and once again the MPU 6050 IMU and the NRF24 module. Ok, so now we know what we need. I gather all the components and prepare my PCB. By the way, I'm not sharing the final files of this PCB yet, since probably this will be a Kickstarter project soon. If you like the idea of a Kickstarter project with both the receiver and transmitter PCB that I already designed in a kit format, tell me what you think in the comment section below. That will really help me. Ok, so the first thing I do is to solder the SMD at Mega Chip. That might seem tricky, but if you fill the pins with a bit of solder and then apply some flux, solder will only stick to the metal pins. The white dot on the PCB will show you which is pin number 1. The chip also has a small dot in the corner, so be careful not to solder the chip backwards. Once solder, take your multimeter and check for shorts between each pair of pins. If we are all good, next I solder in place the 60 MHz crystal oscillator, followed by the two 22 picofarads capacitors to make it oscillate. By the way, almost all of the SMD parts that I've used are 0805 size. If you use a smaller size, you might have some problem soldering those. Ok, so now I solder the push button, the SMD resistors for the pull downs of the MOSFETs, all the other capacitors, the 3.3 voltage regulator on the back with its own capacitors, the pins for the battery input and the on and off jumper. I don't solder the NRF radio module and the IMU yet and this is why. The board is ready but is not working yet since the chip has no bootloader. Without a bootloader we can't upload anything to this microcontroller. To burn the bootloader we have to make these connections between the Arduino Nano and the SPI pins of the design board and that's why I haven't soldered the radio module yet. Now, connect the Arduino Nano to your PC. Open the Arduino IDE and go to Files, Examples, Arduino ISP and open this example code. Upload it to the Arduino Nano. Now make the SPA connections to the design PCB. Go to Tools, Programmer and here select the Arduino as ISP. Now you have to select Tools and burn bootloader. 
the LEDs will flash rapidly and the bootloader is now burned to the chip and you will get the message of bootloader successfully burned. So let's test if it works. Since this board has no FTDI chip, I will use an external programmer. This is an FTDI module. Connect it to the wart pins here. Connect the module to your PC. Change back the programmer mode and upload a blink sketch. In this case, we will make pin 13 blink, since that is the pin with the LED. There you go, the PCB works. We successfully uploaded something to it. Now I could solder the NRF module and the IMU, but I won't do that and that's because this board still have some errors. This is version 4 of this PCB and I'm still waiting for version 5 to arrive from JLC PCB manufacturer. I always try to improve my board and these are the errors that I've made this time. First of all, the voltage regulator. I want to use a 3.7 volts LiPo battery connected directly to my board. The drop-up voltage of the AMS1117 3.3 voltage regulator, which is the one that I've used, is between 1.1 and 1.3 volts. So, if I want a 3.3 volts, I should apply a higher voltage than 4.6 volts, but the battery only has 3.7. I could use a 7.4 battery, but that would require another voltage regulator for 5 volts to supply the Arduino and complicate the layout and the entire project a lot. To solve this problem, I've selected another voltage regulator, the HD73, which has a drop-off voltage of only 90 millivolts. But its layout is different, so I had to change the board. So, this should be a lesson for you, but also for me. Check and double-check the datasheet of each component before you make your project, so you will have less errors. Another small error is that the RX and TX pins are in reverse position, so I had to make this jump small PCB to program the board. Also, the reset button is now below the IMU board, so I can't use it. So, version 5 of this PCB will have all those errors fixed. Till then, we will build the flight controller on the prototype PCB, but since I'm still making some tests, that will be for the next video. So guys, we have seen the components that we need and how to prepare the designed PCB. Have in mind that you will also need the components from the transmitter tutorial, so check that video before ordering the parts. This was just an intro to the final project. In the next video, we will build our prototype board on a piece of drill PCB and finally test it out. Please check my webpage for more details. You also have the schematics and examples below, so stay tuned for the next video of this project. If you would like to help my projects like this one, I have a Patreon campaign. The link is also down below as always. I would really appreciate that guys. So I hope that you enjoyed this video. If so, don't forget to click the like button like crazy and share this video with your friends. If you have any question about this video or any other, just leave it in the comment section below or on my Q&A page. Also, don't forget to subscribe and watch all of my other great tutorials. And remember, if you consider helping my projects, check my Patreon page as well. Thanks again and see you later guys.